Hello everyone and welcome back to yet another video from my channel Interactive Education running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience and today we will be finally culminating the topic of reproduction in organisms with the final uh, concept of reproductive health. Right? We'll be culminating this with reproductive health. Now, we have looked at the process of reproduction in human beings, how reproduction takes place in human beings, right? There's the fertilization process and all. And we saw that basically the transfer of the sperms from the male to the female takes place by the mating process, by the process by which they, you know, interact their bodies. And, we you know, we looked at this process. It was called sexual intercourse, right? So... If there is sexual intercourse, it's a very high chance that there is fertilization of the egg and ovum and finally there will be a reproduction process and there will be the growth of a zygote and a baby ultimately. But for example, let us assume that no sexual intercourse takes place, right? There is no sexual intercourse, right, with the woman. So if there is no sexual intercourse taking place, then obviously the ovum, which is the egg or the male uh, female gamete will not be fertilized right it will not be fertilized now if it is not fertilized we know that every month one ovum is released by the fallopian tube right so the fallopian tube releases one ovum each month and when this ovum is, you know, released, right, the uterine wall, that is the wall of the uterus, the wall of the uterus, it becomes thick. It becomes thick. Right, so this uterine wall right here, it becomes thick. So there is a thickening of this wall. This happens when there is an egg release, right? When there's an ovum released by the, uh, from the fallopian tube and by the ovary. When the ovary, you know, sends out an egg, right? That time, this uh, lining becomes uterine lining becomes thick and spongy. Why does it become thick and spongy? It's because it now gains some blood supply. It develops blood uh, capillaries and blood vessels so as to provide nourishment to the embryo after fertilization, right? So that's why to provide nourishment and proper conditions for the development of the baby, this uterine lining becomes thick and spongy, right? and it receives the uh, fertilized egg but what if now we saw that if there is no sexual intercourse there will be no fertilization and then what will happen that's the question if there is no fertilization and if the egg does not get fertilized what happens well let's have a look now if there is no fertilization process taking place then this egg right here this egg will now start moving right and start breaking apart right and also we know that this uterine thickening lining thick lining of the uterus is now no longer required so this lining starts breaking right so the lining begins breaking right so it begins breaking and this results in a release of blood right so blood is released as well as with the blood there is some mucus so blood and mucus a mixture of this blood and mucus it comes out right and it is released 
through the vagina. Right? And this is some blood and mucus which is released through the vagina. Blood plus mucus released from vagina. Okay? So this blood and uh, mucus releases from the vagina because of the breaking down of the uterine wall, because of the absence of fertilization. And this, pro the, this process of, you know, release takes place for roughly three to six days. Right? It takes place for roughly three to six days. And this process of the release of blood and mucus from the vagina due to the breaking of the uterine wall, due to the, you know, absence of fertilization and due to no fertilization taking place, this process is known as menstruation. Right? And this cycle occurs roughly every month and the cycle is known as the menstrual cycle. Right? Right? So this is what we call menstruation, that every month if the egg does not get fertilized, the woman releases blood from the vagina along with mucus, she loses blood, okay? And this process is known as menstruation. Also, the egg also, you know, it is thrown out of the body, the non-fertilized egg. Right? So that's with menstruation. Now let's come to our main topic of the day, right? Health. Now, we know that this process of uh, reproduction, getting prepared for reproduction, right, it, it involves a lot of steps. There is development of cells, right, development of cells. There is development of organs. Because so many things, things take place and all this is regulated by hormones. Right, we have seen all of this. But one needs to make sure, one needs to understand that these things, right, these, these things, they can only be understood, they can only, a person can only become mature for the process of reproduction after a certain age, right? Just because sexual maturity has started coming in does not mean that you're ready for the process of reproduction. No, until the end of puberty. Until puberty ends and full sexual maturity is achieved, we cannot say that a person is ready to reproduce and, you know, give birth to children. Because children are a major responsibility, right? And you know that the young generation, they sometimes don't think of these things and they really don't think of the repercussions and they go into sexual intercourse and unsafe sexual contact and whatnot. So all these things are very, very dangerous, not only from health point of view, but also from moral point of view, because end of the day, you're going to have a big responsibility of a child if, if the woman fa falls pregnant. So for this thing, right, for these things and for this reason, the government has decided to include reproductive health in the portion, because this is mainly a moral thing. Someone something which everyone should understand about, right? So this reproductive health is an essential part of reproductive education, right? And now what do we mean by this, right? Now we've looked at now the repercussions of sexual reproduction. There can be a uh, pressure of, you know, a child because if a woman falls pregnant due to unsafe sexual contact, that can lead to pregnancy. Also, there can be, so we can have unwanted pregnancy, which I've just discussed. Another major thing which can take place is the transfer of STDs. Now we know what is an STD. STD is sexually transmitted disease. Right? So many diseases, right, like syphilis, gonorrhea, HIV, AIDS, okay, these diseases, they spread through sexual contact, right? And if we see that to avoid, and most of these diseases are very, very fatal, and as I've told you, youth are young, they sometimes don't really, you know, think of these repercussions. So it can lead to these diseases and for ultimately the death, death of an individual. 
and this is very very dangerous right so again this is another repercussion of unthought out sexual behavior and sexual activity right so what are the things we should take care of so how can we take care of this how can we take care that we don't catch these, these these diseases how can we take care that there's no unwanted pregnancy right so there are many things which have been introduced so the first thing to understand is how can we avoid unwanted pregnancy now solutions of unwanted pregnancy right so first of all everyone should be safe right they should not um uh, they should they should take into consideration that that sexual act is not of their age and it's not the time to pursue that act and obviously we don't want pregnancy that age because that's not the time when a woman is mentally physically prepared to be able to actually nurture a child so pregnancy is not a correct way so how can we avoid and uh, how can we avoid pregnancy right so let's have a look first of all we can use some covering because obviously pregnancy only occurs when there's fertilization between the sperm and the ovum so if the male does not ultimately release the semen and the sperms obviously there will be no fertilization so first of all we can put a covering on the penis right covering on the penis right and this is basically the condom like something like a condom we can put it on the penis and then that won't occur next thing we can cover the vagina so the vagina can be covered with certain you know coverings to prevent the entrance of the sperms next thing for unwanted pregnancy can be we can use a certain devices right certain devices or objects such as such as copper tea right copper tea or loop now these things are placed inside the uterus of the mother right they're placed inside the uterus to avoid any kind of fertilization of the egg right and they can be uh, blocking off blocking off fallopian tube so if the fallopian tube is ultimately blocked then the egg will not be fertilized and ultimately there won't be any unwanted pregnancy right there can be blocking of vas difference so if the vas difference that is the vas difference in the male right that's the uh, pipe that's the tube or that's the duct through which the sperms travel from the testis to the urethra for ejaculation so if there is the blocking of that vas difference then obviously there won't be any problem right so these are some ways in which unwanted pregnancy can be encountered right so these are some methods of countering unwanted pregnancy now we come to uh, the stds how can we counter the stds how to counter the stds some methods of countering stds first of all again i would call condom right then covering on vagina these are some common things which are common to both Co covering of vagina right this is covering of penis so after that the covering of vagina then we can you know uh, use certain contraceptives or not contraceptives right uh, instead of contraceptives you should write that one should avoid or we should look into safe sex so safe sexual contact that obviously we should not you know we should use condoms and all right that's important after that um avoiding avoiding multiple partners so if we avoid multiple partners right if there are too many sexual partners then that can lead to a generation of the hiv virus but if there is no uh, multiple partner if a person is faithful to one partner as a sexual uh, partner then obviously stds can be you know reduced to a major extent so these are some ways in which stds can be countered right now there's another method by which we can counter unwanted pregnancy which i forgot to mention was contraceptives 
Now, these contraceptives are basically oral pills, right? They're oral pills which are taken by the woman, which, you know, change the body hormonal mechanism in such a way that the egg is not released into the fallopian tube or into the uterus, right? So, in this way, we can, you know, avoid pregnancies, right? Unwanted pregnancies. And that is all STDs and unwanted pregnancies. Now, let us look at why we should avoid these things. Why we should, you know, even look at, not, look at you know, avoiding pregnancies at, as a whole. It's because, obviously, the growing population. If you see, the population is growing at an alarming rate. And obviously, we don't want to add and completely keep adding to the growing population because it's going to be a burden on the country's economy as well as on the country as a whole. So we should try to reduce the population by using such things, right? So there's no, you know, uh, uh, unwanted pregnancies so that there is no, uh, you know, extra uh, babies produced. Because obviously we don't want to kill any living organism which has already come up into living or come up into being. So the best thing is to avoid the formation of that or to avoid the development of that baby at the, in the first place right so it is important to make sure that reproductive health is maintained to ensure to make sure that the growing population is controlled so to make sure that our youth is safe and to make sure that uh, the, the diseases can do not spread like wildfire right so that's all in this chapter reproduction in organisms i hope you were clear with the chapter as a whole i tried my level best to explain it in the best way i could thank you very much for joining me in the series reproduction and organisms i was delighted to teach you and as i told you there was a lot of similarity with the process cell division and i would request you to go through that as well it's a very very interesting topic and a lot of videos on my channel as a whole there are many many videos other than this please uh, uh just go through them once i hope you really like them and i hope you like the series of reproduction and organisms for class 10. thank you very much for joining me today uh do stay healthy stay smart and take do take very good care of yourself please like and subscribe goodbye stay healthy and do keep studying bye bye